Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Investigation. And in today's episode of Investigation, I'll go over 2021 Fall AMC 10B, number 20. So, in this problem, it states that in a particular game, there are four players, each rolling a six-sided uh, die that is fair, uh, it says it's standard, and the winner of the player who rolls the highest number. If there's a tie, however, they have to roll again, another round, or possibly another round, for, and this process will continue until one player wins. Hugo is one of the players in this game, and what is the probability that Hugo's first roll is a 5, given that he won the game? Now, if we ignore this condition right here, let's say we just ignore it, then, okay, then let's say the probability of him winning the game would be one-fourth, right? Because each player is going to have, well, equal chance of winning it. So, we would have one-fourth. Now, if we ignore that condition, we want to find the probability of him winning if he rolled a 5. So, if he rolled a 5, let's think about it. So, now, if he rolled a 5, we're given that he rolled a 5 and we don't know the other 3 people. 1. The first case, the best case scenario, he just won uh, with no ambiguity, he won in the first round with zero ties, so everyone out of these three are getting one through four. So they're getting four out of the six possible uh, rows, and we need to cube that, because there are three people in uh, these, and they have to row a number less than or equal to four. Now, how about the second one if there is one tie? So one person, other than Hugo, rolled a 5. And that we need to choose of one of these people. So we might choose him, we might choose him, we might choose him. Who knows? So there are three different ways to choose. So there are three different ways. And that this person has to get that specific number, 5. And that the other people can get less than or equal to 4. And note that it is going to be squared now because there are only 2 people left. And that what is the probability of him winning with another run with 2 contestants? Well, that would be completely fair. He's not subjugated to rolling any number. So multiplying by one half at the end would be sufficient. Now, what about there are two ties? So two people other than Hugo rolled a five on the first run. That means that we still need to choose uh, one of the three um one, two of the three people, which is basically choosing one of the three people to be eliminated. So we have three choices. And that those two people must get exactly five. That is a probability of one-sixth. And that, oh, I mean two to the second power. And the rest of one person has to get a one through four. And now what is the probability of him winning with three contestants in the second round, one third. Well, we don't care about him how many rounds the problem goes on four and four and four and four because we it's a completely fair game and Hugo doesn't have to roll anything. He, ha he has already rolled five in the first round. Uh, there is no specific limitations of him rolling on the second round. Now, what about three ties? So all of them got a five on the first. Well, let's think. So all of them, we just choose three out of three people, so there's only one choice, and we have to do one six cube multiply by that to the zeroth power. Well, no one's rolling that, so we can just simply delete that. So one six cubed times well, what is the probability of winning? One-fourth. 
And now we have to also make sure to uh, make sure to make sure that he rolled a five on the first round. So there is a one sixth probability over here. Do not forget about this. It is very important. So let's sum up all of these. So if we sum it up, we get a six, six to the fourth in the denominator. We get four cubed from the first one. Uh, we get three times uh, one half times four squared. We get three times one third times uh, four. And we get just one fourth um, over there. Now let's uh, take a look at our giant expression. So uh, four cubed, that is going to be 64. Can cancel out one of the twos here. We get a two left, so we get 24. Over here, we get one, uh, one, plus, one times four, that's four. We get one fourth over here. Now, if we take out another four, so four times six uh, to the four, that is going to be 64 times four, that is going to be 256 plus 96. Let's make sure you do the calculations very clear, uh, carefully. And here would result in uh, 256 plus 96, that is going to be 352 plus 17 which gives uh, 369 over this mass. I don't want to calculate this mass because we can cancel out uh, nine over here, at least nine. So we get 41 on the numerator and uh, that is going to be a, when you cancel out a nine, the two still exist and the threes has been reduced. So we have two to the sixth power times three squared. Now this is our probability of him winning and rolling a five. So the probability of him winning is one fourth. The probability of him winning and rolling a five is this, 41 over two to the six times three squared. I believe that's correct. Now we're given that he already won, so the probability of that becomes one. Make sense? Because he, uh, we are given that he has won in the last sentence. So the probability of this also has to scale by the equal amount. And that will give us 41 divided by 2 to the 4 times 3 squared and the only answer with 41 as a numerator is going to be c but just to be sure we can calculate it out is 16 times 9 which is exactly 144 so c 144 uh, 41 over 144 is going to be our answer for this problem Hopefully you understand all of the problems and uh, in this step over here I actually uh, used a theorem kind of uh, to kind of simplify this process if you cannot remember the formula of conditional probability and that is the probability of him uh, rolling a 5 given that he has 1 is equal to the probability of giving a 5 and he has 1 both divided by the probability of him winning. But it is going to be the same as uh, scaling up to 1 because we know that uh, the number is certain. So I hope that is a method that is clearer and easier to understand. Well, thank you for watching this episode of Interstigation, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one where we will go over number 21. Alright, goodbye.